everybody. Good morning. It's so exciting to be here in a room filled with the cream of the crop when you talk about the technology community in Lagos. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> and I'd like to just say a big thank you to the members of the GDG Lagos chapter and all the volunteers that have helped to put this together. It's really great to have this opportunity to get amazing talent in the room, to share ideas, to connect, and to learn from one another. And you play a very important role in Africa's future because more and more it's becoming very evident that Africa's biggest challenges will not be solved by traditional methods of the past. Technology is the future. And you guys are at the heart of using technology platforms to create solutions that can really make a difference and transform our environment. If we look around us, there is no shortage of challenges. Would you agree? Is, it, is everything smooth sailing around you all the time? And where there are challenges, there are the flip side is that there are opportunities, there are possibilities, and innovation is fueled by the power of possibilities, which is the theme of my talk today. So talking about challenges, some of you may remember three years ago, there was an, a challenge that was referred to as tomato Ebola. Who remembers that? About three years ago, where there, were, there was a huge scarcity of tomatoes in the market in Nigeria. There was a disease called, um, well, a, a special moth called Tutu absoluta that attacked tomato crops in Kaduna and swaths of farms in northern Nigeria and wiped out a lot of the tomato crops. In fact, over 200 farmers had their harvests affected and lost up to one, over a billion naira in the process. Can anybody remember this time? Some people just eat the food. They don't bother about where the ingredients come from. <laughs> now, the, the reality of that challenge was that it was the first time a lot of the farmers were encountering that problem. And so they didn't know what to do about it. And that moth, the uh, um, pest, was one that was very resistant to a lot of pesticides. However, this problem had existed before in parts of Europe, right? But of course, a, a, a subsistence farmer doing his, his own thing wouldn't have access to that information, didn't have the knowledge, could not afford to bring experts or agronomists, etc., to figure out what was going on. And so they lost a lot of their crops as a result of the problem. And because of the speed at which the disease permeated and wiped out tomato, uh, tomato crops, it was referred to as tomato Ebola. Now, fast forward to today. We have a situation where cassava farmers, for example, in Tanzania, are using machine learning to be able to detect diseases on their cassava crops get answers to, get the solutions, and impl implement those solutions. This is real and is happening in parts of Africa, specific, especially in Tanzania. And with this solution, regular farmers, just as, uh, with the same profile as the farmers in northern Nigeria that, was, uh, that were affected by Ebola, are able to, using their mobile phone, detect these diseases, find out what the cure should be, and administer the cure. That's the power of the technology platforms that we have today. And that is what I mean when I say technology would be the bedrock of creating transformational impacts in Nigeria and across Africa. We keep talking about diversifying the economy, increasing um, productivity of other sectors like agriculture. Now imagine the power of having these sorts of, sorts of solutions that can boost 
productivity that can boost harvests. Okay, so this is an image that just shows the use of the machine learning app I just talked about in Tanzania. How many of you are, familiar, uh, are competent in TensorFlow? TensorFlow, who's familiar with the platform? Okay, okay. There are people, and I know there are different uh, uh, skill levels in the room. There are some people already using uh, platforms like Te TensorFlow and already developing some great applications. Some people are just starting. Wherever you are in the funnel, the principles are the same. And it's really about having an open mind around identifying the opportunity behind the challenge, which is where inno innovation gets fueled. So this is an example of a farmer using, that, uh, using the mobile phone to um, detect diseases, just pointing that to the crop, taking a picture, and uh, getting all the information required. Okay, so the word innovation is used a lot, right? What does it really mean? For me, this is a definition that I think really distills it down to its most important components. Innovation is the process of creating value by applying novel solutions to meaningful problems. There are three things that are really important when we think about innovation. And it doesn't matter where you are in terms of your, your career journey, whether you're just starting out as a developer, maybe you're, you're still a student in school, or you're an advanced developer, these apply to you. First of all, the, f the first question is, what problem are you trying to solve? Does this solve a problem? So it's not just about creating code that looks fantastic, it's, uh, it, it's unique, it's, it's, uh, um, it's complicated, etc. Does it actually solve a problem? Second is, does it create value? And this value is determined by the outside world, by the marketplace, by customers. Are there consumers for this product? Are people willing to pay this, uh, for this product? Is it being used? Does it create value? And then the, set, the third thing is, is it novel? It may not necessarily be a completely new thing, but it could be a new way or a new process around an existing technology that represents the innovation. Let me give a, I'm gonna skip, uh, go a bit uh, quickly in the interest of time, but um, it's worth noting that it isn't necessarily always the best product that ultimately wins out. Rather, it's the best way to solve the problem. And if you look at all the winning products and technologies globally today, you actually see that at the core, they are meeting a need. They are solving a fundamental problem. And when you, once you have that, then you can scale. So let's look at some examples. The iPod. How many of you have an iPod? Or at least you're familiar with the iPod. So the iPod is one of the innovations that is really um, described as a poster child. It revolutionized the music industry. But it wasn't the first platform to provide the opportunity uh, for a, a, a portable music device. 22 years ago, Sony did that with the Walkman. Who remembers the Walkman? Okay. I was thinking that, um, uh, okay, that's good. I, I didn't think I would have company, <laughs> as much company. So um, it, was a, it, it was a device about the size of your purse, right? You have to, you have to load uh, discs loaded with music. So you could carry it around, but of course it was chunky. It wasn't readily updatable. You had to take out the disc, and then it wasn't very easy to up, up, update those uh, discs. Some, some systems didn't even write onto discs, etc. So it wasn't that dynamic. But when it first started, it was an innovation. And then you had the MP3 player, which was an innovation on that because the MP3 player would fit into your pocket. It was digital. So again, the iPod was not the first platform um, for uh, digitizing music. So with the MP3 player, you had more storage as well, so you could store more uh, um, volumes of music, etc. right? But it wasn't as flexible. If you wanted to upload it, you had to take it 
connect it to your computer, download more songs, etc. And it wasn't easy to organize the, 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 the songs that you had uh, contained in there. What the iPod did that was innovative was bringing all those dimensions into one device, one platform. So combining design, ergonomics, ease of use in a single device that was tied to a platform that made it very easy to update from music libraries. So the innovation was creating that easy to use ecosystem that unified music, discovery, delivery, and device. So that's one classic example. Another example that is worth noting is Airbnb. Who's familiar with Airbnb? Okay, great. Who has used the service? Okay, a few people. So it's really a service that, uh, in, a, in, a, in very basic terms, it makes it possible for you to put your, um, your, pro your property, maybe your flat um, or house, on, a, on, on the platform, and people can rent. Can, uh, if they're traveling to your location, like, an, like, a, like, like a low cost alternative to hotels. Now, this started really in solving a problem. So the, uh, the founder, Brian Chesky, saw the need to provide an alternative to accommodation. He had finished studies and he noticed that the cost of accommodation was very high. There was a sports event around that time and he noticed that um, a lot of people were struggling to find accommodation because the hotels were fully booked. He was looking for money to pay his rent. And so he thought, actually, I'm going to see if people are willing to come and share my flat. So he put out an, uh, an ad where he said there was space in his flat for uh, p three people that were willing to use air beds, right, and inflatable mattresses. And that's how Airbnb was born. And the following year, there was a national democratic convention in Denver, in the US. And he saw an article that said 80,000 people were coming to Denver for the, uh, for the event, but there were only 28,000 rooms in all the hotels. And of course, he saw an opportunity. How about I create a system to facilitate the uh, national convention, um, the party supporters, supporting them in hosting other people in their apartments. And the evolution of that model is what we have today as Airbnb. So it started really from identifying a need and then using technology to solve that need. Sometimes we try to do it the other way around, right? Create this great product and then find a market for it. It should be the other way around. We should identify the need. And if we look around us, there are in every sector, there are um, opportunities to solve problems. The final example I'll give on this is Google Search. Google Search wasn't the first search engine. In fact, when I was, at, when I was in school, um, there was Ask Jeeves and a few others. But what was really important with Google Search was relevance. Being able to, to get you faster to the information you need more or less in real time. And a lot of the innovation around the platform has really been around organizing information to make it readily accessible and useful. And technology is applied on the back end to make that service available and to make that possible. And so, I started by saying that um, when we look around us, there are many challenges. And it's important for us to have that thinking mindset, to challenge the status quo. Like, why can't this be better? If you look at different uh, sectors and platforms, there are many things. I've talked about some examples in agriculture. Uh, you can think about security, credit, access to credit is a, is a big challenge that we know about. Um, healthcare, we talk about shortage of doctors. Are there things that can be done with telemedicine? with uh, uh, software to be able to make health healthcare more available to people uh, across board. Uh, uh, CRM systems, yes, there are off-the-shelf systems, but are they sufficiently localized? Are they sufficiently flexible? Are there things that you can create that would really speak to the specific and unique needs in the market?
governance, we, you know, we talk about sometimes questions around ac account accountability, right? With the mobile phone and technologies that are available, you know, how about you know, different possibilities, maybe even a monitoring app where if you're passing an area where there's a government project, you get a ping on your phone, and then you can take a picture that easily gets uploaded somewhere so that people can see what's happening with this project. Like, we need to start thinking, not just about the sexy ideas, but actually thinking about in, every, in establishments, in different sectors, in organizations, where are there opportunities to make things better? In healthcare, I'd like to play this video of uh, some gentlemen that created something very interesting. Sound analysis is used in so many fields, such as identification of music, and the identification of the type of animal based on the sounds that they produce. Sound is critical to what we're doing because physiological sounds are very important in medicine, but the traditional stethoscope hasn't changed for close to 200 years. The doctor is limited by the human ear and they cannot hear specific frequencies. This method is very inaccurate and causes a lot of misdiagnosis. Our mission is to use machine learning and TensorFlow to revolutionize the diagnosis and treatment of respiratory diseases in low resource areas such as Sub-Saharan Africa. The Tambua app is a powerful screening tool that helps doctors make decisions quickly. The core technology is trying to mimic the human auditory system. Once the patient walks in, the doctor collects the lung sounds with symptoms, risk factors, and vitals of the patient. And then the Tambua app combines all that information and gives the doctor a probability of the patient having a specific respiratory disease. Eric introduced TensorFlow to us because he felt that we can use TensorFlow to go through all the stages of development to deployment of our model. Our model uses spectrograms. We take sound data from the digital stethoscope and convert it into a visual problem that the computer can best identify. We have worked with a number of clinics and pathologists and we are able to collect data from 621 patients and then we use that data now to build our machine learning model. Once we had trained and evaluated our machine learning model, we deployed it on our Tambua app. TensorFlow Lite helps us to perform an inference on a mobile device without the need of a connection. So doctors can use the Tambua app offline without connecting to the cloud. There are 216 healthcare facilities that are using the Tambua app and the Tambua devices. These clinics are spread out and some are very rural clinics. It's really a nice project. I, think it I can elicit a crackle plus the vital sounds. Then when I add the clinical history and the other physical examination, there's no need for me to take this patient for an X-ray. Misdiagnosis, which is one of the problems leading to deaths in Kenya, is really creating a menace. Tambo is helping me. It shows me even the things that I would have missed in case I had the traditional way of doing it. Over 2.5 million people die each year because of pneumonia, asthma, COPD, and pulmonary tuberculosis. I believe that we can use machine learning in treatment and management of these respiratory diseases. What's great about this is that these are young Africans, like the people in this room. And I think for as long as we all remember, when you see a doctor, you see the stethoscope, and of course, they, and that has actually not evolved for a, for a long period of time, right? And what the doctor does is just get a sense of whether something is wrong or not, right? But then, a lot of analysis needs to be done in the back end if, if there's an uh, irregularity, a uh, number of tests, etc. Now, what these guys have done have been to be able to speed up that process, so to collect that data and immediately be able to give a response. Again, that is putting, um, uh, uh, bringing that thinking hat, looking at a situation, no matter how established, right, and thinking, is there a better way to do this? And if we look at different sectors, there are opportunities to do that. 
And if you're just starting out in your career or you're a young developer, it's great to be part of a forum like this because the important thing is to soak up as much knowledge and information as possible, develop relationships, build your capacity, your competence, so that when you identify those problems, you have the capability right, to actually create a solution or to team up with a couple of people to create a, a solution. And then, of course, when you get that right, it's important to have it tested, to put it out there, let people use it, give you feedback, and then see how you can scale. I remember, so I, some people were maybe aware, but I started life as a developer. I read computer engineering in IFE, and um, I did a postgraduate uh, uh, study at Cambridge University. Now, for my project, I, I created a client-server application using the Java virtual machine at the time. And it was called a Java virtual conference room. It was basically a messaging uh, uh, application, very similar, not as sophisticated, not as robust, etc. But in terms of basic functionality, very similar to, uh, to, to Skype today. And I actually tested it back then with a friend of mine in, in Lagos. And it worked. We were able to establish the connection, create a room, uh, and so on and so forth. You can see me later for, for more details. But I didn't do anything about it. You know, at that time, my, my focus was just, let me hand it in, you know, uh, get my grades, and move on, right? If I had shared it widely, perhaps someone would have pointed out to me that, actually, this can be something. You, know, you can do, some, do more with this. You can evolve this. This can actually be a useful product. So it's very important. That's why these communities are essential. And in your time here today, try not to stay with the same people. Try to meet as many people as possible, right? And in the process of your work, collaboration is very important. There, there are open uh, systems. There are opportunities to, to reach out to like-minded people. Let's use those. You don't have to start from scratch, right? Um, leverage what's available to get you there faster because there, there, there's, there's, there are lots of opportunities to do really great work. Yes. This is something that um, I actually believe is very possible. We've already seen the emergence of some great innovative solutions from, uh, from Nigeria and across Africa. And I would love to see a headline like this that says, an African tech solution becomes a global household name. How about that? Is the silence, uh, we don't think so. Or is the silence, yes. Or is the silence, hmm, I'm thinking, how can that be me? Do you think it's possible? Absolutely. I see no reason why not. So I'll just round up by uh, just mentioning, OK, I think I have one. Um, as you know, we have digital skills training available. We're training uh, uh, 10 million people across Africa. We pledge to do that in five years. We've trained 4 million so far, uh, probably uh, basic for people in this room. But you can spread, spread the word to people in your life that you know need to raise their level of digital awareness and cap uh, capability. We also have training for developers. We, we uh, pledge to train 200,000 developers. And this is in partnership with Andela Pluralsight. Um, and, uh, well, Andela and Plur Plur Pluralsight. Um, and it's administered through the Google Africa Scholarships program. So if you go online and you search Google Africa Scholarships, you'll be able to get all the information you need and how to apply. I know some of you in this room are already beneficiaries of that program, uh, which, is, which is great to see. Uh, we also have a program to support technology startups, early stage technology startups. It's called Launchpad Accelerator Africa. And um, you know, this is a pledge we made in 2017 to provide this level of support. It includes mentoring over a three-month period, uh, space, and a lot of other support and resources to really help you take your business to the next level. Again, if you go online and search for Launchpad Accelerator Africa, you'll be able to get uh, as, uh, all the information. And the Googlers in the room as well can provide you with, uh, with a lot more details. Um, one, one more thing we um, kicked off uh, a couple of years ago is a, is a fund, a $20 million Google.org fund to support uh, NGOs that are really advancing the cause of economic prosperity, education, and so on. And we've given out uh, $6 million to a number of uh, organizations that are really being innovative around solving societal issues. 
um, some using technology, you know, e-learning applications, e-health, etc. And so, uh, you know, more information about that is available online as well. So we remain committed to support developer communities. It's great to see all the Google developer groups around the world. Um, and it's great to have this gathering here today. Uh, please continue to engage with the community. Uh, continue to use the resources that are available. And uh, I wish you a really, really productive day. Thank you.